Hi everyone, Dr. Mary Elder with Four Points Family Chiropractic here. We are located in Northwest Austin, Austin, Texas. And I just wanted to briefly speak to you today about sleep and quality sleep and how to make sure that you're getting it. There's a lot of strategies that you can use, um, but you know, knowing why it's important is really the first step. Our sleep has a huge trickle down effect on our general health and most people are sleep deprived to some extent. And there's kind of the transient kind, like you just had a bad night of sleep and you catch up later. Um, but you are probably wondering why on earth the chiropractor is even talking to you about it. It's because we see it a lot in our patients. So people will come in and they're tired. They've been tired a long time. Um, you know, it ends up making them sick. It impacts good sleep impacts everything. So your immune system function, your hormones, your blood pressure, digestion, your neurotransmitters, your happiness and your sad neurotransmitters. You should be sleeping seven to nine hours a night as an adult. And if that sounds like a lot to you, we have some work to do. Um, there's kind of a cultural thing where people are really proud of themselves for surviving on four to five hours a night. And they feel like that means they're really killing it. It's not great. <laughs> the trickle down effect of that later on in life is is a big problem that we'll see in people. Um, about 60% of the people out there with Alzheimer's have at least one chronic sleep disorder. And the reason that is, is sleep is where your body cleans up the waste product. So the beta amyloid, your body cleans it out while you're sleeping. So if you're not getting the sleep, all of the waste products in your brain from the day just aren't getting being gotten rid of. And that can have impact later on down the road. So my goal is to give you some actionable steps that you can start using today to make sure that your sleep moving forward is good. The biggest thing to consider, and if you walk away from this with just one thing, the way you start your morning is gonna determine how good the sleep is the night after. So just let that sink in for a minute. Like the decisions you make first thing in the morning are gonna make the sleep you have later that night better. And that's all because of light. That's all because of a certain part of your brain called the hypothalamus. So I'll talk to you more about that in a second. Um, but the big thing to remember is that we are regulated by sleep uh, by a very specialized part of your brain. And the hypothalamus sits at the ba base of your brain and it controls your temperature and it controls your sensitivity to light. So humans are built to run on a circadian rhythm that depends on sunlight. I know some people say they're night people, some people say they're morning people, but when it all comes right down to it, we depend on light to let us know when we're supposed to be reacting to certain things, when we're supposed to be waking up, going to sleep. So here's the problem. We manufacture false light environments all the time. I'm in one right now. Like there's a window here, so I have natural light, but there's a light on over here and there's a light on behind me. All of that's unnatural light. And it, over time, it can confuse the brain. It won't right now because it's the middle of the day. So I should be awake. But when we're exposing ourselves to blue light and white light, the way most lights are during the evening, then we're telling our brain it's time to be awake, wake back up. And then our melatonin doesn't get produced the way it's supposed to. We have trouble going into a deep sleep. So there was this great study done about people who were reading um, on iPads before bed and people who were just reading like normal old books, they still exist. Um, and the people that were reading iPads were having trouble getting to see sleep, staying asleep, and they weren't getting as much REM sleep. Now, REM sleep is where your body does memory consolidation. So if you're feeling a little foggy, you can't remember things, you're not getting enough REM sleep. The people who read just regular books slept totally fine. So trying to turn your devices off two to three hours before bed, don't look at blue light. That's gonna be the best way to make sure that you're getting good deep sleep at a consistent way at a consistent time. That's not realistic for everybody and I totally get that. Some people need to be available by email. They have Zoom calls late at night. Maybe you work a night shift and you're gonna be under fluorescent lights anyway. There's ways to kind of work around it. Um, bare minimum, if you're gonna need to be on the computer or a screen, try blue light blocking glasses. That's a really good way to at least limit what's coming into your eyes and telling your brain that it's time to wake up. Um, the next best thing as well is you can control kind of your bedroom environment. Um, the way to do that is you can get light bulbs that are uh, on the 
orange or red light spectrum that doesn't do the same thing to your brain that blue light and white light does. So if you just replace the main uh, light in your bedroom with an orange or a red light, you're going to see better sleep as well. Um, try to be outside as the sun is setting. Again, our bodies are really finely tuned machines. So if you're outside or you're letting ambient light in as the sun is going down, your melatonin production is going to be what it's supposed to be. Versus if you go to, dark, go to work when it's dark, leave when it's dark, you have to kind of manufacture that and that's where that light comes in. So these signals going to your brain, those need to be quick and efficient, right? Like our body needs that feedback all the time from the brain and vice versa. So if you know somebody whose nervous system probably isn't regulated, you can kind of tell from talking to them, they have poor sleep. If they want to come in and get assessed, we do full neurological assessment, orthopedic testing, nerve assessment, and full spine x-rays and a follow-up with the doctor to go over their nervous system function. If you know somebody that wants to take advantage of that, they can call in and they can mention this Facebook Live or say deep sleep, and then they can get that full $348 exam for $97. And we'll also include a cervical pillow that's meant to help support the neck to encourage good sleep as well. So if you can't put your devices away, you can't be outside, um, you can't do some of these tips that I'm telling you, don't worry, <laughs> there's other things to do. I always tell people control the controllables. So you might not be able to control your work schedule or where your light's coming from, but consider, um, again, the light change with the actual bulb, but also get blackout curtains. You know, we can't control the ambient light outside. There's street lights, um, people keep their floodlights on, your neighbors might. That little bit of light is enough to impact your sleep. So either sleep with a sleep mask or get blackout curtains, especially if you're somebody who has to sleep during the day because of your work shift. That's really gonna impact your circadian rhythm and your long-term health. So control that controllable. Um, you also want to try to control your noise input. Our brains, remember, we were out on the savanna as predators and prey for a while there. So our part of our brain is attuned to hearing noise in the night, things that go bump and we wake up. Uh, it can be as simple as your air conditioning cutting on and off. Some people, that's enough to wake them up. Consider earplugs. Obviously, if you have kids, that's not an option. A white noise machine might be a good thing. Just make sure that you're having a consistent noise level in the background so that you're getting consistent sleep there. Um, control your temperature. Our bodies do best sleeping at 68 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. We're in Texas. It's uh, work to get it there, <laughs> but we all have a thermostat so we can control it. A fan is a good option if you don't wanna be running the AC for the whole house at that temperature. But regardless, make sure you're paying attention to your temp because your core body temperature, that feedback goes to you guessed it, your hypothalamus. <laughs> so your temperature and your sleep are very closely regulated with each other. Um, again, good night's sleep happens the day before. So if nothing else, make sure that you are getting natural sun first thing in the morning. You have to be exposed to that sun first thing in the morning, the first couple of hours as the sun is coming up. This triggers your cortisol to react at the correct time in the right way. So when your sun exposure happens, your cortisol does what it's supposed to, and then it drops at the time it's meant to at nighttime. If our cortisol spikes at a time it's not supposed to during the day, then we're awake for longer. We have to kind of force ourselves to go to sleep. Now, the do's and the don'ts of diet for healthy sleep. So the big don't here is kind of obvious. It's caffeine, sorry. <laughs> Caffeine's not great for our sleep. We all know it. It's all in the timing. So don't have caffeine after about 1 p.m. That's too late. It's gonna disrupt your cortisol levels. You also shouldn't have it first thing in the morning. A lot of people wake up and they go straight for the coffee or for the tea. Start your day with water. Um, it can be a little bit warm. You can put lemon juice in it, something to perk it up for you, but you have to start with hydration. You actually shouldn't even be reaching for the caffeine until about two to three hours after you wake up. And even then you want to limit it to a reasonable amount. That six cups a day thing isn't great for you. I know it's easy to do, but try to limit to one or two cups. One is better. 
Um, avoid alcohol, obviously. Alcohol does not, I know it makes you feel like you go to sleep, but it spikes your blood sugar and you don't get as much deep sleep or REM. So overall, you're just doing more damage long term. <clears throat> uh, don't eat less than an hour before bed. Try to have your meal and then have some time to wind down before you go to sleep. Again, for the same reason, when you eat that close to bed, your blood sugar spikes. So your body's working on the digestive process before it's working on things like clearing your brain out, letting your body rest, resetting your cortisol levels. So make sure you're timing your meals appropriately as well. Some people who practice intermittent fasting do recommend doing your fast overnight. I agree with that. I think it kind of eliminates the problem generally, but you find out what works for you. There's, again, no real magic bullet here. I know a lot of people will reach for melatonin in the evenings. That's fine in a pinch, but you don't really want to become dependent on melatonin because that's a hormone that your body produces. So if you're supplementing it, you want your body to understand that it has to do it on its own. So again, you can use it if you absolutely need to, but don't force it. Don't make it something that you depend on every night. Remember, Every single one of your neurotransmitters, your hormones, the building blocks for that is from your food. So focus on balanced, whole nutrition. Make sure that you're getting your nutrients appropriately. I do want to speak to you briefly about um, magnesium. It's likely one of the biggest nutrient deficiencies generally, um, certainly in the Western world. Around 50% of people are magnesium deficient. The reason that matters, magnesium is responsible for about 600 biochemical processes in the body, including neurological function and your sleep. So if sleep is an issue, consider supplementing uh, magnesium glycer glyc <laughs> sorry, glycerophosphate um, because that activates your parasympathetic nervous system. And again, the parasympathetic nervous system, you will, you will hear us talk about that um, all the time in our office, but it's the part of your nervous system that calms you down, that gets you to where you can sleep. And that's another big reason that chiropractors are having to kind of focus on things like sleep because most people are in sympathetic, they're in fight or flight all the time. So your nervous system needs to be able to switch from sympathetic to parasympathetic. People have trouble with that. And if you know somebody that's in sympathetic overdrive, they're anxious all the time, they can't get themselves to calm down, then they should get checked out by a chiropractor to make sure their nervous system is functioning appropriately. Again, if they're in the area and they'd like to get checked, they can get the full exam, including neurological testing, um, uh, orthopedic testing, full spine x-rays, and a review of findings with the doctor. It's normally $348. If they call and they mention this Facebook Live or Deep Sleep, then they can get the entire thing for $97 and will include a pillow to help support the neck curve during sleep so that sleep is more comfortable. So. Um, now, what do you do if you've traveled <laughs> or you've had to work a night or you have jet lag or something kept you, a new baby kept you up at night? How are you going to catch up on all of that? So this is when you're going to pay really, really close attention to light and not time because your body's still thinking you're on a certain clock, but you need to adapt to your environment. Okay. So if you get on a plane and you fly to France, you're adapting to the light there because that's what your circadian rhythm is going to end up following. You can't really con your brain out of not following the light. So you're going to be focusing as much as you can on avoiding exposure to artificial light. Try to control that. It's not fully controllable, but do your best. You're trying to use your hypothalamus to your advantage. If you have changed time zones, you have to get outside for the first few hours of the sun coming up. Find out when the sun rises. There's apps that do that for you. Make sure you are up and either by a window or outside. If you are moving, it is better. Go for a walk first thing in the morning. If you're trying to reset your sleep, it'll do wonders for you. Um, avoid exercising too late. We have this tendency to kind of come out of work or out of an event and be like, all right, well, I got to swing by the gym and try to work out. Working out's great. I want you to get the physical activity. Try to shoot for it being earlier in the day. When you exercise too late, your uh, heart rate goes up and it can raise your cortisol levels and negatively impact your sleep or at least the depth and time of your sleep. Um, a warm shower before bed 
can help trick your body into thinking that it's time for sleep. The way that works is it uh, very minimally and temporarily raises your core body temperature. You then have a reactive lowering of your core body temperature and that tells your hypothalamus, okay, it's time to go to sleep. So if you need to, you're having trouble getting to sleep, take a warm, not hot, a warm bath or shower that'll raise your temperature and then lower it. And my final recommendation is it's okay to nap. If you have missed sleep, you need to catch up, you've traveled, you have jet lag, take a nap. Uh, the way to do that though is to try not to do it more than two hours before bed and limit it. Do 15 to 20 minutes of sleep. None of those three hour naps that you feel like you want to. Trust me, I've been jet lagged. Um, I definitely have come back from a trip and thought to myself, well, I'm just gonna go to sleep at 3 p.m. and that'll be it. And then my sleep's just jacked for the rest of the time. So just consider that as an option as well. Take little naps. You can do that even if you're not jet lagged. 15 to 20 minutes has a great way of resetting that particular part of your brain and then you can go about sleep in a normal way. So again, if this is anything that is impacting you, please recommend that somebody watches this. If they're not getting sleep, it has huge health implications. And if there's any way we can help support their nervous system during that process, again, if they call our office and they say that they have watched this Facebook Live or they mentioned deep sleep, they can get the full exam, including x-rays, neurological testing, nerve study, and a follow-up with the doctor and a pillow to help support their sleep. It's normally $348. They can get it for $97. Our number at Four Point Stanley Chiropractic is 512-345-9355. Uh, thanks for tuning in for this. If you have any questions at all, just leave them in the comments and we will answer them. Thanks again.